Good morning, everyone. And thanks so much to Public Eye to inviting me in this important program. Uh, and thanks, Liana, for introducing uh, me in here. My activism in, uh, in the garment industry is very personal. When I was 12, my father got ill, and he couldn't work and couldn't bring food in the table for us. So then me and my 10 years old brother, we went to the factory. And I was uh, sold clothes for multinational companies and making less than $12 in a month, working over 450 hours work. That was the life looked like when I was in the factory. We were cheated on the overtime wage and it was clearly a waste theft. We went to strike and we own. A few of my uh, co-workers who joined in the strike, they fired. And then I came to know there is a law that's supposed to protect our rights. I started organizing my co-workers to join union. But manage management, all the time, they harassed me and fired, blacklisted, and I was just 16. Then I went to work for union and then I co-founded the organization called Bangladesh Center for Worker Solidarity, where I work today, uh, a worker center and that educates workers about their rights and conducts research. I became an organizer and never stopped. Not when workers were beaten and tear gassed for demanding higher wages, not when the government has made illegal our organization to operate. Not when the factory owners brought falsified criminal charge against me and put me in jail. Not even when my friend and co-organizer, the union organizer, Aminul Islam, was disappeared, tortured, murdered, and all evidence pointing out to the national security intelligence. The garment industry is a major employer in Bangladesh over four million workers, more than 80% of whom are women, mostly from poor rural backgrounds. They make clothing for exports, mostly US and European brands and retailers who have flocked to the country to take advantage of rock bottom wages. The minimum wage is only $68 for per month. And that's after the wage hike a month ago. Due to inflation, it's not much more than I used to make 20 years back. Over 1,800 workers have been killed in a factory fire and building collapses in our garment industry since 2005 in a dozens of incidents. Since the Rana Plaza building collapse last April, there have been, no, uh, there have been more fires. For example, uh, in October at Ashwad, a Gap and Walmart supplier where seven workers were killed. Three years ago, 29 workers were killed in a factory fire that Liana just uh, mentioned, the factory called That's It Sportswear. The emergency exits were locked. The all escape, uh, escape road, uh, routes were cut off by the smokes. Soon after the fire, labor groups and the unions started negotiating with Gap to put an end to the constantly climbing death toll in the uh, garment industry in Bangladesh. To the great dismay, dismay the Gap refused to join, in a, uh, join a program with unions and instead launch a corporate controlled program with Walmart uh, in, is accountable to no one other than the companies themselves. Gap has been highlights, highlighting the its financing but it's, there's a program for the loans rather than direct financing to the factories repair. Even after my country has experienced the deadliest garment industrial, industry disaster the world has ever seen, they are not in, uh, increasing the prices they pay to the factories to include the cost of safety. The programs that we are calling to the gap to join and which they have so far refused 
is one of the independent safety inspections with public reports, mandatory repairs and renovations to address all identified hazards. And a central role of the workers and unions include workers lead safety committees in all factories and access to the factories for unions to educate workers on how they can protect their rights and their safety, including their right to refuse dangerous work. The companies in the accord commit to the work with their suppliers to secure financing, maintaining orders, and ensure renovation are completed to make factories, uh, factory buildings in Bangladesh safe. The immediate cause of the incidents in Bangladesh are flammable material piled in the hallways or is illegal bottom floor room storage. So, um, you know, literally the building has been constructed uh, for residential. It is the, when the government, you know, all the uh, retailers raced to the Bangladesh to, with their orders, uh, the country wasn't even ready to accept, uh, you know, all this business. So, the, you know, your bedroom, drawing room, and living room has been, uh, the wall has been break down and that become a factory. So, they're not uh, electrically approved, construction, uh, you know, uh, the properly construct. So the buildings are look like that today. And every factory, uh, there is not enough uh, fire extinguishers, not emer emergency exits are exit in those factories. And uh, they do not have external fire exits to escape when it is emergency in the factories. But there is another core part of the problem that must be uh, solved. It is time, and again, workers speak up with the concern about the safety risks. They are not listened to. Whenever workers, you know, uh, raise the voices, I mean, it is, I'm just talking about two or three months back, or before maybe Rana Plaza, the workers' voice never been heard. Whenever they raise that, you know, our electrical system is not working, we saw there is a spark in the cable, or we saw in the crack, but, they, they were forced to keep doing their work what they, they would do. So uh, their you know, right to refuse dangerous works always been denied. So when I uh, think, uh, say about uh, right to refuse uh, the dangerous work, I think of the Tajreen factory workers who smelled the smoke and tried to escape from the factory, but they were forced by the factory management to go back to their work. And lately, when they really found there is a fire in the factory, they tried to escape, but they saw the doors, yes, doors are locked, and the factory manager uh, ran with the key, and the key's never been found. So the workers literally burned to ash in the factory. And when I talk about this uh, right to refuse the dangerous work, I'm thinking of Rana Plaza workers. When the workers saw in the crack in the building and they refused to go inside the factory when they have been threatened that their uh, you know, wages will be not paid, which, which was due to pay, and it been says that they will lose their job. And workers even slapped to the go, go to the factory next morning. Even it has been lied to them that the factory has been inspected. It is safe to work. The building owner, he says, the factory will be, you know, leave like 100 years, but it did not, did not exist 100 minutes even. The factory collapsed with over 5,000 workers. So literally the, you know, workers' right to uh, refuse the danger of work always been overlooked and disregarded. This is why we are uh, that uh, you know fear until GAP joins to the accord and bringing other American companies along with the along with it, garment workers will continue to die. I mean, if they do not join, the workers in Bangladesh will continue to die in in the factories in these death trap factories. The low wages that keeps families in the cycle of the poverty, uh, you know, poverty, the repression of union rights, the unsafe death trap factories where workers. Uh, works 12, 12 hours in a day. These issues are all connected. The solution need to be address all these issues. And here is my message to the brands is, we don't want you to leave, my, uh, leave our country. There is no doubt we need these jobs. We want these jobs, but we want these jobs with dignity. When we talk about the changes, the change can be happen. It's happening but there is still a long way to go. Let me briefly share uh, some of them. 
uh, you know, uh, advances and the challenges. So let's start with the advances. So here now, over 130 companies who signed this accord, which is an accord on Bangladeshi fire and building safety. And uh, this is going to undertake inspect, or near, inspect nearly uh, 2,000 factories where they're sourcing from. Um, it just uh, start getting, you know, it's getting started and uh, it needs support from GAP and other companies so that it can be as effective as possible is saving lives. After three years, my uh, worker center, the Center for Worker Solidarity, has our registration status back. Finally, this month, all the falsified criminal charges that uh, br was brought against me has been dropped. But still, there is some federation, union and federation leader uh, facing all those criminal charges. The government is processing union registration these days. Uh, it is after you know huge uh, pressure from international part, especially from U.S. When they suspended the trade privilege called uh, GSP, the government has opened the window and giving registration to the uh, unions. And last eight months, is over uh, 60 union has been registered, which is a good sign. There is a new ways. It's more, but when you think about the inflation and the cost of living, $68 per month really is a still a property wages. So what are the challenges? Well, speaking on the wages, you know, how do we get the living wage? How do we get a, uh, to a fair minimum wage with increasing tie to the inflation? Global companies, you know, they just cannot stick to the diverse of the wages. I think it is more than high time for them to increase the prices that uh, you know, for the product they source from our country so that our workers can get the minimum wage now. Most of the workers and the families affected by the Tajreen and Rana Plaza uh, disaster, they're still, you know, looking forward for the compensation. Majority of them they haven't uh, received any, full, uh, any compensation from the company, neither from the government or from this, uh, the factory owners. So there's only four uh, uh, brands who just you know, stay forward and say that they will uh, pay the compensation, but it's still many to join. Many of them, especially from Rana Plaza, the many of the brands are from Europe. So definitely we need your support to put them uh, pressure to join in the compensation package. And from US, none of them stay forward, not even pay any sense to these families. Many of these families pull their children out of the school because that is the best way they know. And many of them, they're living in a miserable condition. They don't have even money to bring food in the table, which is the condition for them. So we need a full and fair compensation to these, uh, for these workers. Even though I have been jailed, confronted, and the smallest space you can imagine that the psychologically tortured at the hand of the state, I'm still standing up today. My aspiration is putting human rights and labor rights at the center of the trade union, uh, trade and development and efforts to the end poverty. It's listening to the voice of workers rather than silencing them. It's putting workers themselves at the center of decision making that affects them so that together we can build a future with more equality. The way that GAP can listen to the workers is to join the accord. Thank you all for listening and giving your um, important time, your attention for the, your concern for justice and dignity for government workers for my country. Thank you so much.